Hello again from the UEG TV studio here in Barcelona and I'm pleased to introduce to you Giovanni Marchegiani. I rehearsed a little bit. Is that correct how I pronounce your name? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Giovanni Marchegiani, you are from the Department of General and Pancreatic Surgery, University of Verona in beautiful Italy. And you are the lead applicant and member of the UEG Quality of Care Task Force. Moreover, congratulations, you have been awarded the UEG Activity Grant for your guideline implementation. Now, what guideline was it and why did you choose the topic? Thank you. Um, so, for me it was pretty easy to choose the area of interest because as you said, I work in the leading pancreatic center in my country and it's one of the top institutions uh, worldwide ex focused uh, specifically on pancreatic disease. And among this uh, disease, I chose pancreatic cyst because they actually represent an intriguing entity encompassing a wide spectrum of disease. So some of these cysts, uh, they are completely benign, they are incidentally found and people can live with them. But some of them are actually pretty harmful because they are the precursor of pancreatic cancer. So it is one area of great interest in the GI community. We have multiple guidelines to help clinician to choose whether to follow up a patient or to go to the operating room, as we have two big risks in this regard, because of course we don't want to follow up cyst becoming cancer, but at the same time we don't want to perform harmful operation on individuals who don't, don't need that. Mm -hmm. So we definitely chose this area because it's a hot topic, not only in pancreatology, but I would say in the entire GI community. And uh, when we were talking earlier, you said guidelines are fine, but sometimes we don't adhere to them. <laughs> and so you invented an app, even an app to disseminate your, your, your guideline. Tell us about it. So that's correct. So um, we first of all realized that um, sometimes guidelines uh, might not be used in a clinical practice. And that is kind of ironic because, you know, even those drafting the guidelines, and I'm part of them, uh, maybe they don't follow them in a clinical practice. Because sometimes, you know, for uh, issues of the public health system, we cannot uh, actually stay stick to these policies or in other cases it's just because the guidelines are not known by the community so we decided first of all to take a snapshot of the situation right now in Europe by conducting a survey to ask clinicians whether they actually know the guidelines and if they follow the guidelines and second to implement uh, this and to disseminate the guidelines we decided to create an app as you said. It's called iSYST and uh, the aim of this app is to let clinicians have in their pocket all the indication from the guidelines in a, let's say, easy way. Can you demonstrate uh, yeah, the, the, the app? So now you're going to see between us what the app is about. So yeah, so this is the interface. We try to make it uh, as nice as possible. So of course the first uh, function of the app is to uh, let the clinician have in the mobile the actual guidelines. So you see here now that you can choose, as I said, there are multiple guidelines. So you can choose which one you want to read. Of course you have the full text and you also have uh, as you can see now here between us, a, uh, you can navigate through the uh, flowchart. So basically when you ask, oh, okay, what am I going to do in this case? The flowchart tells you this or that. But uh, then the, um, we also wanted to provide with an even more clinically relevant um, tool. So now you see what we can do on a specific case, meaning that you have your, your images, your patient in front of you and you want to take a decision according to the guidelines. So you see now that you can put down all the specific features of the specific case with very easy questions like yes, no, this is present, this is not present. And at the end, by hitting the button, you receive, as you can see now, the specific indication from the guidelines. So the guideline says, uh-huh, mm, maybe go to surgery or consider to follow up your patient. So this, I think, is the most relevant thing that this app do because, of course, we want to create something that is nice and useful, but it has to be used in the clinical practice. So hopefully, 
let's see in one year if we uh, made it. Sounds fascinating, uh, but like a lot of work and, and, and steering such a big committee, collaborators and all that thing, how did you do that? How did you achieve to uh, keep on track with this project? So, um, I think this is really relevant. Um, you First of all, I think you should, as I said, identify an area of interest and then you have to rely on a network. That is really important. We are all European, we're proud of being European and we need to collaborate. These are projects that need to be multidisciplinary, so I'm a surgeon, but I know that uh, I can do very limited thing without you know, all, all other you know, uh, figures that uh, deal with pancreatic disease, and this is true in all area of GIs. And then uh, I think it's very important to let people be involved in your project. So being in touch with them, we have now many weapons, for example, for this project, we create a, a sort of a platform in which everyone can join, sharing data, and so it's important to, you know, uh, be in touch and let people feel they are involved in this project. Sounds very reasonable. Giovanni, thank you for joining us. Thank you for demonstrating thank your you. app, very interesting. And uh, again, congratulations to your award. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much.